Hi YouTube, today I will be reviewing the QuickPad Pro, a MS-DOS based machine from the early 2000s. I bought my unit for $40 on eBay around 2013, but this machine has become rarer since then. QuickPad Technology also released the QuickPad IR word processor, but that did not run MS-DOS. The QuickPad Pro, the DOS machine, has a 32 MHz Vatum VG330 processor. This is an 8186 compatible NEC V30MX system on a chip with performance comparable to a 386. It was designed by Vatum to be used in DOS palm tops generally, but by the time it was released in the late 90s, DOS had fallen out of favor for portable computers due to the rise of Palm OS and Windows CE. The machine has one meg of RAM, which is split between 640K, which is standard DOS system RAM, and about 256K, that's a RAM disk. It either has one or two megs of flash ROM, one to two megs of standard ROM, a CF slot, which supports the one gig card I'm using, a 480 by 128 or 60 by 16 character display, a full QWERTY keyboard, USB B port, the serial port with both TTL and RS-232 levels, and an infrared transceiver. The front of the machine, which we're looking at now, has the LCD up top and the keyboard. The keyboard's quite nice with a really great feel and decent travel, but the display, sadly, is not quite CGA compatible. I'll get to that later. Now, for the, now let's take a look at the bottom of the machine. The bottom of the machine has, has two fold-out feet to improve the viewing angle. One and two here. That really helps when you have this on a flat surface. And it also has the battery cover. I'll remove the battery cover now. And we can see the machine runs on AA batteries, in fact, a total of four. These can be alkaline, NICAD, or nickel metal hydride. Though in most models, batteries can't be recharged in the unit. Certainly in this QuickPad Pro, you can't recharge the batteries. The machine runs on these four batteries for 50 to 100 hours, depending on use and the battery type. This is excellent battery life. For comparison, the Alpha Smart Dana runs 20 to 30 hours on three AA batteries. The Fujitsu Pocket PC Plus that I reviewed earlier in the previous video has a battery life of 8 hours and is only a 16 MHz NEC V30. Very similar processor to what's in this machine. Now let's switch from the bottom of the unit and the front of the unit to the left side. Okay. The left side has the reset button here and the CF card slot. As you can see, I have a one gig CF card in my QuickPad Pro. Now let's flip from the left side to the rear of the unit. On the back, is, from right to left, is a USB-B port, a serial port, and an IR port. The IR port, I think, is designed to work with QuickPad's custom transceivers, but I haven't tested that. There was indeed such a port in the earlier QuickPad IR. I don't think it's ERTA compliant, though. Again, I haven't tested it, I'm not sure, and I haven't seen any way to access this from DOS. USB and serial ports are excellent for transferring text to the computer. You press a send button and the transmission acts like the quick pads and other keyboard, a human interface device that's connected to your computer. Unfortunately, though, I never got the QuickPad Pro PC connectivity software working on my other PCs. And I never could successfully use terminal software with a serial port, even after building a custom serial cable. That's really too bad. If I could have, this machine would truly have been a TRS-80 Model 100 or Amstrad NC100 killer. 
Now let's finally move to the right side of the QuickPad Pro. On the right side of the machine is a curious looking slot walled in plastic. This is the location for the phone jack of an internal modem. Some models also had a modem built in, but mine does not, which explains this covered slot. As far as, as, far as software, the QuickPad Pro runs general software DOS-ROM 4.3, which seems to be MS-DOS 5 compatible, and includes a word processor, spreadsheet, graphing, a scientific calculator, and per personal organizer, and finally, a file manager. I'll go ahead and turn the machine on. You can see system booting. Okay. And once you boot up, you can get a help screen by pressing the question mark. And so we see help, battery status, font, LCD brightness, getting into DOS, the virtual screen, and various bits specific to the QuickPad Pro and DOS and System Manager. The word, processors, uh, the word processor is unfortunate as it only edits text files 64K in size or smaller, but you can run several other word processors that get around this limit, such as Vim, VDE, Word, WordPerfect, and WordStar. In fact, I've used Vim 3.0 a great deal with this machine, which lets me get around the 64K limit for text files. Now I'll go ahead and show you the spreadsheet, graphing scientific calculator, personal organizer, and file manager. I'll start with the spreadsheet. Okay. Spreadsheet is F3. I'll go ahead for my test spreadsheet, which I've done earlier. Um, yeah, this saves either as its own custom format or in Excel format. You can do seven, for example. Eight, and then I could do B zero plus B one, and voila, seven plus eight is fifteen. So that's nice. I'll save it again in standard spreadsheet database form with that name, and that's saved. I'll exit, exit from here. Escape. And now I'll switch to the graphing scientific calculator. This is surprisingly nice for you know a very simple built-in calculator. I can plot functions with this calculator, as I said. Let's try y equals sine of x. And there you go, very slowly but accurately, you see y equals sine of x plotted. I could do cosine of x. And you can see the shift in phase there. Okay, so now I'll shift from that to the personal organizer. Escape again to exit. Personal organizer I can access by pressing F5. And this has either contacts or a scheduler that lets you uh, put in, oh, oops, S for scheduler. Scheduler that lets you put in um, appointments and, and events that come up. Finally, there's a very simple file manager I'll get to that will show you both internal memory and external, as in CF memory. Okay, it's on the internal drive now. I'll press X to exchange the drive. Take a few seconds, and it'll show me all the folders that are present on my CF card. Let's see. Games and trash. Okay, so I'll go ahead and leave the file manager, a little shell, if you will. And now I will access DOS. So the way to get to drop into the command line is pressing Control Enter. And then you press yes to ex exit the manager. That drops us into the B drive. A is the ROM drive. 
a dir slash w. A is the ROM drive that I believe is, yeah, here it's, it's about two megs. This is one of the newer models. Uh, C is the RAM drive, dir slash w, about 256k there. And finally, D that we'll have fun with here is compact flash. Now let's see how big that is. Yes, that's 900 some megabytes. That's a free. That's about one gig total. Now let's see what version we of DOS we have by entering in the command ver. The version is General Software Embedded DOS ROM 4.3. This is pretty much MS DOS 5 compatible, as far as I can tell. While most DOS programs struggle to run on the device due to the, its non-standard 60x16 display, a lot of text-based software actually works great when it's properly adjusted from 80x25 to 60x16. There is this scrolling option, but you don't seem to get 80x25 with that scrolling, as you can see when I attempt it. Alt, arrow key down, again extra nine lines, but when we go over you can see some overlap from the left side to the right side. So the virtual 80 by 25 window doesn't seem to work quite right. In addition, reverse video is a huge pain as there's different uh, there's different interrupts or, or uh, assembly sequences to assembly language commands and uh, machine code commands to implement reverse video relative to other PC compatibles like 95LX. And again, this means a lot of software isn't going to show some inverse coloring of text properly. Anyway, the display is good enough for DOS prots, so I can play a good game of Zork. Let's try that. I'll enter in start, which should initialize everything and get the right path. See if I can do a Q frots or frots. Okay, so I'll go into games. And from games, I can go to frauds 243, and there's Q frauds here. That's a batch script that's adjusted, that's frauds for DOS, adjusted for 60 by 16 text display. And now let's demonstrate how you can play Zork with this machine. Q frauds uh, D colon slash games slash Z code slash if slash zork one dot z five okay oh that wasn't found okay z dot dot dir z code okay so And there we go. So I can play Zork with my QuickPad Pro. I can open the mailbox. Read the leaflet. And truly this is, you know, a great machine for interactive fiction. Let's go ahead and quit. Yes. I can also play some simple uh, roguelikes. Such as uh, Zig Climb, which is a small 1KB size roguelike that I've configured for the display. I'll go ahead and try that real quick. Uh, CD dot dot CD rogue L. Zig CS3. Okay, yeah, and this is this is a roguelike game. The way you move is by pressing 
Fn and then different commands to move left and right. And anyway, this, this works very nicely on this machine. And if you want this, I can post a copy of, of my version on my website for any QuickPad Pro users to download and play on their machine. I'll quit by pressing Shift Q. Anyway, so that's a few demonstrations. To exit DOS and return to the system manager, I can either press Control Alt Delete or type QMGR at the command prompt and press Enter. QMGR. Now I'll power the machine down now that I'm set with my tutorial. You can find more information on the QuickPad Pro in two websites that I've listed in the video description. And with that, I conclude my review of the QuickPad Technology QuickPad Pro. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions about the machine. Thanks for watching and please check out my other videos.